Select Board Meeting to Order, uh, October 9th, 2019. Uh, and we're going to jump into our consent agenda. Oh, uh, there we go. I was laughing because I thought my computer <laughs> just froze. <laughs> it's all funny. Yeah. Uh, first, we have minutes from June 19th, 2019, July 10th of 2019, and July 17th of 2019. We have warrants PR2008. AP 2014, AP 2014S, AP 2013, AP 2013-2, AP 2014V, and WP 1960. We have a Cultural Council appointment of Lucy Abbott. We have a Sewer Rate Relief Fund application permission to sign and submit grant application before the 10-11 deadline. We have one day liquor license, top of the campus, court club donor reception basketball champion center, October 23rd, 2019, all alcohol. We have a mass DOT chapter 90, uh, select board signs applications for reimbursement for paving on Roosevelt Road and Rocky Hill Road. We have a one-day liquor license, top of the campus, Eisenberg School of Management tent at homecoming game on October 26, 2019, all alcohol. We have a Hadley Police Department resignation, Anthony Liberto. We have a one-day liquor license, top of the campus, UMass Hockey Game, Mullen Center, October 12, 2019, wine and malt only, concourse concessions. And then finally, a one-day liquor license, or one-day license, top of the campus, UMass Hockey Game, Mullen Center, Arena Floor, Pond Club, October 12, 2019, all alcohol. So moved. Can I actually ask you to correct the dates for that? the last two liquor licenses? They're actually the 11th, not the 12th. Oh. I was looking at the wrong month. Oh, okay. Sorry. Amendment. Uh, top of campus, UMass Hockey Game, Mullen Center, October 11th, 2019. <clears throat> and top of the campus, UMass Hockey Game, Mullen Center, Air Arena Floor, Pond Club, October 11, 2019. Thank you. All alcohol. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, I accept for uh, the sewer and the paving of the roads there. Okay. Chapter 90 grant. Okay. Um, is anyone here for public comment? The public comment period. Okay. Um, I'm just going to move since you're here. Is the Council on Aging Director appointment? Um, oh, select board recommendation of Senior Service Director Search Committee and take any action, including appointment, that may be required. I don't know if anyone else is here from the. I think someone's coming. Is we'll someone coming? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Peg is going to come. Yeah. Okay, we'll wait. I just noticed you're here, so I figured we'd get you. that. <laughs> like, no, we don't want to do it alone. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll wait on that. Uh, accounting services? Not much to say on that. Yeah, I guess we can do accounting services. Bay State um, Municipal Accounting Group will be closing its business on December 29th, 2019 and the town is exploring alternatives right now. Um, I don't know, Dave, do you want to say anything in regards to this or? Yeah, so this is an unfolding situation for us. We've uh, reached out to the two regional planning agencies, both of whom have uh, accounting functions. Uh, town of Hatfield is interested in exploring the shared service. Uh, I've been in touch with a couple of, uh, of um, private uh, companies that specialize in municipal accounting in New England. Uh, some are going to be talking to us on Friday morning. Some are not able to help us out because of uh, geographic distance. So we have some options uh, and we'll bring it back to the select board when we have uh, a direction that uh, we think that they should be going. I think Molly, you mentioned that this should go to the financial management team as well. Yeah, it seemed like it'd be a good um, group to talk through kind of the pros and cons of the different different options. Going back to a, a, a town account. That would, that, that would be one option. Yeah. yeah. The three options that are broadly taking shape are 
somebody on site who can do the routine work, and then there's this uh, CPA who does the five higher order functions as, as a service. Go straight service like we have right now, or a full time accountant on on site. Those are the three broad options, and any one of those could be shared with the town of Hatfield if that's the direction we want to go. In. Yeah, I mean, if this, if what we've had for the last four years were sure with Hatfield, then maybe there's something we can do for the P50 deal or something. You know? mm -hmm. <coughs> it does seem like the accounting service was working okay, uh, fairly well, uh, you know, currently, I would say. You know, we had some issues, but it seems like it has been working pretty well lately. Yeah, I think, it, you know, at the, at the department head meeting, they're definitely, um, some of some of the department heads clearly want to go back to the way it was, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, so that, that's yeah, going to we'll be see. that's going to be a position. Okay. Yeah. I mean, in terms of the past service that we've had, you know, there have been bumps along the road, but yeah. we also got a triple A bond rating, so right. Yeah. We'll be doing something right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I think part of the the hard part is where where um, base state municipal really benefited us isn't necessarily something that the individual department heads would would realize mm -hmm. or see mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know so it's balancing that with them feeling that you know the the immediacy of the response time that they got with an in-house town accountant was mm -hmm. beneficial to them yeah. but I, I think we, we need to take the whole thing into account yeah plus it's a little easier to make a change if we need to, if something's not working out, then we have an outside accountant as well. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd like to have this all wrapped up by mid-November, so that's the time frame I'm operating with. Okay. So what do you want from us? Just to be aware, um, TV22 did drop on by to do a uh, broadcast, so you'll see that in the news. But in it's been in the Mass Live, it's been in the Daily Hampshire Gazette, there's also been a Boston-based uh, news organization that's reported on this. Um, you know, so people are interested. Um, we're taking a calm and measured and carefully planned approach to this change of circumstances, and uh, steady as she goes, we'll get this thing uh, up and going again. But they're continuing until the end of December, right? Yes. 29th. Can we put our two cents in? Or no? Oh, well, that's what we're talking about the, at the department head meeting today. Yeah, you were in no, training sorry. today. No, they okay. wanted to. Um, we talked about having the financial okay. management team discuss it, but then there were some department heads that said they'd like to at least have have a say. So. Okay. Good. I think that's good. But we don't need to say anything else there. We don't need to take a vote on anything right now. So can move on. Um, <coughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking is um, basically, you know, we have had uh, s several folks in the community and every year it comes up that the administrative charges that the enterprise funds have for the town, that formula is always questioned and uh, you know, people don't quite understand it, so basically would like to really form a committee that would have an independent review of that administrative charge and kind of come up with a formula that's clear and that's balanced. Um, so I was thinking if we could get one or two people from the select board on the committee, um, you know, a member of the finance committee, I was hoping the town treasurer on that committee and um, who else? And then people from the <coughs> enterprise funds that would want to be on that to kind of come up with a, a balanced administrative charge that people can understand and that can be implemented for the 2021 budget. Um, so I've the, had people express interest in doing this. The financial management team already mm -hmm. has um, that has those people and then then some on it, so it would include the collector and the uh, assessor. Mm -hmm. um, but everybody else you mentioned is on it except for um, so maybe the financial management team could just stay intact and invite the DPW to the table. Um, you know, having heavy media 
it, it's such a small mm -hmm. amount. You know, I don't know if it makes sense to have them there for the discussion. We understand what their concerns are. I think they'd be represented through for the department. Why do you have to have it for all of this? Would you have all of them? No, I'm saying rather than form a whole separate committee. committee, just have it have the existing committee take it to talk about. It. Yeah, you have a financial management team in place for just this kind of thing. Okay. So I would, I recommend that you give it to the financial management team, and if people mm. who are representative of the enterprise funds could uh, be in attendance, uh, that seems like an appropriate way to go forward. Um, Yeah, I don't know if anybody else has any other input. I mean, yeah, I uh, you mean, guys you have both have. spoken up on this before in the yeah. past, so I don't know what your your input is. Yeah, I mean, you should have DPW involved and TV5. That's where you're taking the money from. If they don't understand, this is where the friction comes in. Mm -hmm. And if it's not correct, then we need to correct it. Well, I don't think it's an issue of it being correct, I think. Well, I do too, so maybe there is. Maybe there's some other ways around this. <coughs> I think it's just about the transparency of the calculation and, mm -hmm. and everybody agreeing that the calculation is transparent and then everybody, you know, I think even right now both sides aren't necessarily happy if you consider we're taking sides. You have the enterprise side and the town side. I think we're in a place where not everybody is entirely happy, which might be the best we can do. <laughs> so, right, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> but I think it's worth, you know, it's always a pro an issue, um, and I think it's worth just revisiting it and trying to make it more transparent, yeah, having that involvement. I talked to David, too, about just uh, there's no harm in looking to see how other municipalities handle it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So we could look at some other calculations, methodologies, whatever, mm -hmm. see if they make any more sense than what we're already doing. Yeah, and the answer may or may not be yes. That's how we came up with the present yeah. model is that we were looking at best management practices with public towns that have enterprise funds that are not tax supported. So, and uh, we borrowed heavily from the town of New Littleton mm -hmm. uh, for this particular model. Uh, but you know, there are many towns out there, many enterprise funds. <coughs> a lot of them have administrative chargeback models. There's no harm in taking a look at uh, the universe of best management practices out there. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things like you're talking about, and I'm sorry, transparency so much as um, I, I think people are having trouble tying the numbers that are that are in the book back to the source mm -hmm. because some of them are combined numbers. You know, like when David puts a line item in, it may be from two or three different places. Mm -hmm. So making it easier for people to go back and see exactly what the source. Yeah, so the in some places you have to combine them and show an aggregate number because of privacy rules having to do with health insurance and things like that. So you know, I don't see a way around that, but you know, by all means, try to make things as illuminated as possible. Right. Mm -hmm. And I don't think anybody really has an issue with the chart, the idea of administrative chargebacks. It's just how maybe they're applied in understanding how they're applied. Because um, from a DPW perspective, when we look at administrative chargebacks, just say for processing water bills, mm -hmm. um, we were looking at ways to save money, and you know it's hard to look at the numbers and say, well, sixty grand a year goes to covering the cost of water bills, and that's only for doing water bills and nothing else. Because then we can't look at we can't compare an outside contractor services to say, well, we could hire somebody else and save money or do this more efficiently mm -hmm. if we don't know what we're looking at for numbers. So. I, I don't have an issue with the chargebacks necessarily, just people being able to understand how they're applied. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And exactly. The, and the, like per person per capita for, for all the issues per person, no matter what it is, whether it's health insurance, retirement, and on and on, because that's where you bundled it all together and just came up with a number. And, and the number seems to be quite high. And then the other reason for this, too, mm -hmm. is just with our concerns on sewer right now and that enterprise fund is. You know, right now we've turned one knob, which is debt, uh, transferring that to another mm -hmm. account. But we don't really have a lot of other knobs right now besides raising rates. Right. So this is one more area to look is, can we do anything with those administrative charges to try to save money in that enterprise fund? Mm -hmm. Tim, you have a question or Suggestion comment? Suggestion you might want to bring in one of the developers that has gone through this process. Suggestion he could 
give the insight to the financial group on the whole process and why it's a little convoluted. And again, I don't think anybody out there is worried about impact rates. It's just how it's developed is the big issue. But I think maybe a developer that's been through this process one or two times can really show some uh, guidance and ideas on what people go through. Mm -hmm. Private sector is different than the municipal too. So I don't know how helpful that would really be. You mean because a lot of people say, well, that's ridiculous. It couldn't possibly be that many hours. Because that's the, the what's yeah. behind the administration. I don't think that there's a real. The, I get a lot of complaints about it, but I think. What people so, are telling me so, is so just to be clear, when you're talking about the sewer impact fees, mm -hmm. we're talking about the oh, administrative, oh, administrative charges. charges. Yeah. We're talking about the administrative charges. Right. We're talking about the administrative charges to the enterprise <laughs> funds, not the sewer it's impact fees. It's all the same fee. thing. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so, thought is right now bring this to the financial management team. And if we, yeah, let's, let's say that right now. Um, and, and if certain enterprise funds, all enterprise funds will have an opportunity to have a say yeah. in the process. And some involvement, DPW might be more involved than Hadley Media might be involved. Um, but we'll try to make it as fair as possible. And, and maybe as a first step, just breaking it down to the most basic level of how the formula is applied now mm -hmm. before we even talk about changing it. Yeah, maybe put fine. tick marks on yeah. there and say, right. A, line one, mm -hmm. right. comes from here and this is where you can find right. it. And to your point, with the employee benefits, if somebody looks and, and you say, um, this is the, the, these are the actual plans that this pool of people have signed up for and somebody says I don't believe it well then have Joan say no I checked the number and it's accurate <laughs> you know? yeah, so I mean just yeah. something like that yeah so um, there is actually a methodology section to the enterprise funds. Mm -hmm. so you know I think we'd start from there and look at that written out methodology if that methodology doesn't seem to hold water, then that could be a place where we can target our information, our attention, rather. Okay. Anything? Yeah. yeah. All right, all set. So we have a poll hearing, and it's Eversource here. All right, got a project number 6A921536. Butters have been notified. And this is on Middle Street? Yes. Uh, I'm Nick Kriegel with Eversource. Um, this is a new fully owned pole on Middle Street. Um, purpose is to serve the new town library, bring a three phase um, 600 amp service over there. So we need to bring primary across the road. Um, and that's the purpose of the new pool. I guess I'm on a butter, but I don't know how I'm on. Uh, our property is on Gothy Street. I think when they do it, they take uh, a hundred foot of butter, but it, I mean, that property stretches pretty far, so I don't know if, if it maybe picks up another street when they do the butter cards. Do they? Yes, to the back side of your property. Back side of the property. Yeah. Okay, so I, I, I'm recruiting myself. <laughs> <laughs> Motion to approve. Second. Any further discussion? Any of Butters here besides Joyce? <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. That's good. So approved, and uh, if you need anything signed, we can always do that. No, no nothing signed, okay. No, there is signed, but you don't give it to him. Okay. Yeah, I don't need it signed. Thank okay. you. <laughs> okay, then we have 650 public hearing for 110 grill. Pledge of license. Anybody here from 110 Grill? Jennifer, do you know if anybody was coming? There, general manager. 
their district manager, uh, Patrick, was supposed to be here. We could wait, too. We could do the senior. It is a public hearing. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could continue it if you would like. Um, as I understood from the lawyer, he would be attending. Um, I don't know. I mean, it is a duly published meeting, so it, I leave it to your pleasure. I mean, uh, can we go ahead and approve it anyways? I mean, it's not like this. You don't, I mean, unless you have questions for them that you'd like to, to ask. The, I've, re I've reviewed it. The application is full and complete. And Tim, they're they're good yeah, um, yeah, with all their yeah, approvals and. They're good with you, right? They've done everything. Square one. Right? Pretty much, yeah. We just have to do a final report. Yeah. Yeah. Motion to approve the uh, pleasure of looking at Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Snowy to lose. Yep. Good <coughs> um, thing we didn't say no, huh? <laughs> <laughs> And yes, yeah, 650. So we'll wait on the next one. We could. Has anybody here from Texas Roadhouse? The Texas Roadhouse is not going to have anybody in attendance. They, this is a. They aren't. I can wait till 655 if you want. I guess we we can wait. Do um, you guys mind if we do council on aging director appointment right now? I could. Let's do that. So, thank you all for coming. I uh, read this earlier, but then. I was trying to get it in quickly because uh, Halo is here, but uh, we'd like to hear your recommendation for the senior services director, so go for it. Ed Wilson, as a member of the search committee and the chair of the Headley Council on Aging Board of Directors, it is my pleasure to introduce you to Haley Wood, our, the candidate we unanimously chosen. After 17 years as a senior, senior program officer at Mass Humanities in Northampton and a year as the managing director of the Double Edge Theater, she made a very conscious decision to change direction with her career and serve older adults in our region. She started on this path as an ombudsman man at Highland Elder, Elder Valley Elder Services, serving Linda Manley then was hired as a care advisor. As a care advisor, she made multiple home visits to many older adults living all over Hampshire and Hampton counties. She moved on to the East Hampton Council of Aging as an outreach worker two years ago and also became a shine counselor and the bulk of her work has been in that capacity. She helps people with a wide array of issues and has a good understanding of the purpose of the Council on Aging to help the elders in the community. And she is able to start as the new Executive Director on October 21st. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. Uh, for discussion, uh, Ms. Woods has asked for an extra week of vacation instead of the two that would be customary would be granting three. I talked to Labor Council, there's no problem with that if that's the direction of the board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have no problem with uh, approving that. Uh, from my end, I don't know if we need to make a motion on that. Was that, was the contractor who negotiated as far as the search, search committee? There, so there's David, can you explain how, what the, nature of the position is as far yeah, as contracts so this, go? This is not a contracted uh, position under Massachusetts general law, but you can do a letter of uh, agreement on uh, an annual basis granting that additional week of vacation. The, uh, the, the standard is, is you can't give an employee something more than other folks on the, or let me say it this way, you can't, um, you can't substantially go beyond what other employees are going to get in a week's vacation is within that margin. And so we'd be doing this for a one-year period to start with, or are we doing this indefinitely until? She would be eligible for three weeks at five years, so you'd be doing, doing one letter of agreement every year for five years. Okay, but on a yearly renewal basis, yes. basically. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. okay. So, uh, uh, did you make a motion? I did not make a motion. I was just saying I, I can make a motion, but I, or can, or, can David make yeah. his motion? Yeah. 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 I'll amend my motion um, to provide for three weeks of uh, vacation time for uh, the first year of employment. I'll second that. Okay. 
Any other discussion? Thanks. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, thank you. congratulations. Thank you. It's great to have you aboard. Thanks Can't so wait much. to get a start, so thank you. Do you have anything you want to say to yeah. us? <laughs> oh, well, I'll just introduce myself. I'm Haley Wood. Um, Peg just did a nice job summarizing my career. I'm coming from the East Hampton Council on Aging, where I have um, had a very fulfill fulfilling experience as an outreach worker, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to marshalling what I've learned in that capacity in a leadership role for Hadley. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome and hope you enjoy. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all for your yeah, help for in the search yeah. committee. Appreciate it. Thank you. Did a great job. Thank you. It was a good group. I yeah, sure. very good group. We didn't laugh too much, just a little. Bit. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. Okay, six fifty-five. Uh, change of beneficial interest for Texas Roadhouse. Liquor license, corporate ride change, wide change, excuse me, and no one's going to be here. Is there anything we need to say? This is something y'all just did uh, for six months ago for Texas Roadhouse. Yeah. They've actually removed two people from the list, so they, therefore they have to do it again. Again, they submitted through the ABCC. The ABC has already approved it. This is coming to y'all, and then it goes to them again. Okay. Standard. I just have a question. So they pay two hundred dollars every time they make a change. Yes. Yeah. Do they pay that to us or no. to the ABC? No. The, the, the town of Hadley has the ability <laughs> to put change. You can charge a fee for license changes. At this time, we don't. But if that's something y'all want to explore, seeing how Texas Roadhouse is doing it so often, maybe you maybe you do want to assess a, a fee to the change of licenses that come through. You're missing an opportunity for cash mm -hmm. over there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Especially if it's more than once a year. I'm happy. <laughs> to think about. I'm happy to research and come back to you with what other some other towns I know do charge. Some don't. It's sort of yeah. a 50-50 split. I'm happy to do the research for Probably you. Probably like back. a minimal paper charge. Mm. It's an administrative charge yeah. usually. That'll be good. Okay, Thank you. I'll do the research and bring it back to you then. Yeah. Motion to approve this uh, change of beneficial interest. So second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> can we can we round up to seven? Sure. Seven Do we know if anyone is going to come for the pins? Again, no one is coming for the pins. This is a change of ownership. Again. Uh, this is this is a little different. They're changing their corporate owner. Um. Sorry, I'm going to pull theirs up here. They're changing their corporate owner, and then once they change their corporate owner, they're changing their manager. So they have multiple amendments here. Okay. It's it, it, this is just a standard. And is the owner? I'm just looking here to see if there's anything. They're going from ownership split 50-50 between David Breen and another gentleman who we've never seen from Florida, and okay. they're changing it to a LLC, a Peg or Pins Entertainment Group, and they'll call it Peg. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. First here. Uh, why don't we do the um, the SWOT analysis for public safety? We can try to get you guys out of here. We'll let Tim go first. Tim, yeah, why don't you go first? Yes, he's fading fast over there. There. Yeah. So, as my SWOT analysis, pretty much a duplicate over last year, but a couple of things have been happening. Certainly, I am really ecstatic right now that we're really looking at some new software for the town hall here. I think that's really when and when we do pick one, and it, if it's successful, I think it's really going to help in a lot of fronts for everybody here. Um, it's going to reduce paper. It's going to be give ev the applicants the ability 
to do a lot of stuff online to start looking at where their uh, applications are on these larger projects. And all in all, I think it's really going to benefit all of us. I'm looking forward to that. Um, one of the other things I'm, I'm doing right now is I've tasked a DD to uh, start looking at other towns with fees. We've, we all talk about fees and where they are. We haven't looked at them for a couple years or so. Pl um, plumbing, we're doing plumbing right now and we'll phase in electrical and um, building fees. We certainly have to do uh, weights and measures immediately. So uh, those, those uh, so hopefully in a few months we'll have um, a proposal for all the other uh, department, uh, the other um, inspections for you. Uh, so you can uh, see where that can be for uh, new fees. Uh, we are, I mean, like with every town, they, they, everybody starts going up on some and whatnot. And I think we're out of the skew on some of them right now. Uh, the other thing is you've, um, you are all aware that we have finally started a good projects coordination meeting. Uh, it was a little tough to get off the uh, blocks, but it's working now. Uh, I, I think the last one we had had a lot of great input from a lot of the um, participants. And I think uh, certainly there was uh, one or two people saw the need for it. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to that. I think that uh, it's going to be a successful thing for all of us. It's going to be very helpful. Just in the mere fact that people can see the quantity of large projects that we have and some of the complexity on some of them, it's not as easy as one might think. So those are really good things that are happening right now. Um, as far as permits and fees being collected, we're pretty much on the same mark as last year. Uh, right now, as for example, building, we're just just a few under 300, which is about where we were last year. Uh, fees just on uh, building is about 127,000 plus, and that's about what we were last year. Uh, certainly, there's a different complexity of the jobs that we have, and uh, certainly there has been um, a need for more time out in the field. But all in all, I think this has been a pretty productive year. And uh, again, you know, uh, with the transition that will be happening, uh, I'm hoping that I'll have something in front of you with some um, suggestions in probably a month. Okay. We're looking at a couple towns right now, trying to weigh something out to see if it might be something we can look at um, for shared inspectors okay. it might be good something you guys want it might not be we just have to put the numbers <coughs> together and see what can work out all this uh, weights and measure, measures been working out since we've been using north hand well i it's i think it's worked well i think this whole idea of payment versus timing has been problematic uh it, right now we're not making any real <coughs> Um, profit off of it and that's not what it's supposed to be but yeah we have to raise the fees up based on the numbers that are coming in mm -hmm. and uh, I mean certainly with the amount there it's something we could start looking at again like I said last time sharing it with Board of Health inspections uh, certainly Emma wants to really start pushing that getting something in the future, the uh, company that we're using, uh, I think we're not going to be seeing them after a year or so because of, uh, they're about ready to retire out of the field. So we have to seriously for the town to start looking at that. It might be something that could actually be advantageous, put those two combined as one service. And Is Northampton keeping up with keeping up with the inspection? Yes. Yeah. Okay. He's. I mean, we don't have, there's absolutely been no complaints. 
he when he starts them he rolls them right in mm -hmm. uh, and you know the money comes in Didi doesn't have much problem at all collecting so uh, that's actually been running extremely smoothly it's just the issue of payment versus the timing of the inspections is is kind of backwards right now mm. unfortunately right David yeah, so we got an invoice from uh, Northampton around July 1st. Uh, so long as we pay it by June 30th, they're happy. Um, we can't pay it until the money comes into the revolving fund. So sometime around April, I give up Northampton a call. It's time for Mr. Fletcher to do his thing. Uh, and we, we get the money in, and Northampton's been happy. Uh, but uh, I think they've discovered that there's more to inspect and um, their mm -hmm. rates have gone up for themselves. So we'll be bringing this to the select board on November 6th for your review and approval oh, for okay. uh, <coughs> changes in the fees for not only the seal waste and measure, but also for building inspections, electrical, plumbing, gas. Yeah. yeah. So you're saying I should get my permits now? Any questions right. that you might have of me right now? No, I was going to ask you the question about kind of that deliverable we asked you for about the other towns and inspectors and mm -hmm. what kind of direction we should start looking in that way, but you answered it, so. Yeah, I, I need to get some real precise numbers for you with regards to inspections. Mm -hmm. Those towns that we're looking at have gone through several inspectors while we're doing this too. Oh wow. Yeah. So it's been problematic trying to get the, mm -hmm. the numbers together. Can I just ask about, so uh, plumbing and electrical have their own code? Yeah. Yeah, their, their own code, their own issues, yes. their own. <laughs> um, it's, it's around mass general law. Yeah. My brother-in-law, when he left here, he's a plumber. Yeah. He went out to the city of San Jose. Mm -hmm. He wasn't the plumbing inspector. He was the overall inspector. He did everything. So yeah. there, there wasn't a separate department just for plumbing. It was included into everything. Right. Yeah. Uh, Connecticut, the building inspector is also a plumbing inspector and electrical right. inspector. Um, I think they're actually going to go away, away from that because it's, it's too complex mm -hmm. to deal with everything. Mm -hmm. And are we keeping up with yeah. any issues falling behind or anything? We're getting all the electrical inspections done, all the plumbing inspections Yes, done. Um, Paul Miller is doing a lot more inspections. That's that's actually working a little smoother okay, yeah. now. Uh, yeah, I think there's a transition that's happening right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Plumbing codes are going to be changing too, it sounds like. All the uh, codes are changing. Yeah. The plumbing inspector Everything yeah, changes. there's awesome. going to be some, there's some good parts of that change. Yeah. So, yeah. Get a new book. <laughs> mm -hmm. And yeah. yeah, and when these codes come out, seriously, with every one of us, you're looking at well over $2,000 now in just the books. It's, it's crazy. I got 17 book, different code books to deal with. Yeah. 107, 100 and some odd pages just on swimming pools. Can you believe that? Mm -hmm. We'll get you an iPad instead. No, <laughs> 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 oh, it's, it's gotten cheaper. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually not. <laughs> I got the codes online and it's it's pricey to get it even online. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Fire codes. Uh, Fire codes, we just got an update. Yeah. It'll start this month. It's enormous. The amount yeah. of changes. Okay. Well, thank you, Tim. Thank you. Yeah. You're more than welcome. Uh, meeny, meeny. Yeah, do you guys want to do rock, paper, scissors, something like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry. You don't let me know. Oh, okay, great. So I'll give you the uh, abridged version. Um, if you have any questions, you are you have copies in front of you, and the red is my update for you folks. Um, but uh, generally speaking, um, all of the helpful and internal things uh, are still in the good category. They're still very helpful. Uh, we're still um, obviously making improvements on things. Um, job descriptions and updated policies, rules, and regs. Um, most of you probably know by now uh, that we are in the um, opening stages working towards accreditation. 
Um, we are in the self-assessment phase, which is kind of the most time-consuming phase where you have to make sure that everything is, uh, meets the standards um, that they set forth. And luckily, um, you know, when we started, we, we didn't uh, adopt any policies that weren't already accredited. But unfortunately, obviously, things change along the way, so we're making sure that we stay up to speed on those things. Um, the opportunities, most of the opportunities within that category have actually become positives. Um, with working with the boards throughout the years as well as finance committees those who've been on the finance committee um, I look forward to uh, doing some more research. I have a couple of uh, um, Friends who are chiefs in other areas who uh, Embarked upon the regionalization of dispatch uh, just recently and um, waiting for some data information from them so we can get some more not just numbers, but also you know their general feelings on how things are working out so we can look into that as well I, I keep I'm gonna keep that in the opportunities column for the time being uh, because we're still uh, we're still looking into it um, the vast majority of the harmful uh, you know things that I would consider problems have uh, again with working with uh, this board and others through the years have become non-existent um, lack of structure, discipline, you know, issues of technology being behind. Um, these are all things that we have made repairs to and worked to better uh, over the years. And I wouldn't classify almost any of these things as still being um, harmful issues. Uh, threats, the last category. Um, I really, you know, again, I don't have a, a, a concern about, you know, our funding or anything like that because I feel like um, the Finance Committee and the boards have listened uh, to us in public safety in general over the years and recognized when there is a problem and have filled the need adequately. Um, again, regionalization of dispatch is in there. I, I think I explained before why it was in two different categories and we're still um, doing some research on that. Unfunded mandates will always be in that category. Um, it will never move. I feel like every day I get another email or letter from the state or the government uh, advising us of another, you know, person that we have to certify in this or go to this training class. And these are all things that we just can't prepare for until the uh, the letter hits the desk. As a matter of fact, I just got one today. Um, about certifying some officers in some training techniques in dealing with sexual assault evidence kits. Um, there's a new evidence kit uh, collection online um, program that they're rolling out from the state so that they can better keep track of these things. And the, there's a new law that was recently passed as it, regard, as it relates to public safety that we have to have officers trained and certified in certain things to make sure that um, we're in compliance with that law. These things come up and we deal with them, we move on, but as I said, we can't ever really take that out of that category. It's always going to be there. Yeah, because usually there's a certain protocol that we use in the ED. There, it, you go into that room, you're in that room, nobody comes out mm -hmm. until after the whole right. protocol. This is, is for specifically for the kit when it comes out. Oh, and okay. it goes to when the, it goes out, goes it comes out and it goes into the officer's hands, goes back mm -hmm. to the detective, mm -hmm. um, gets logged into evidence. It's now becoming, um, because of problems that they've had over the years with lost kits or damaged kits and things like that, they're all they're trying to put it all into one electronic database. And there's certain there's certain officers need to be trained in certain things, certain techniques um, in dealing with the victims because there is potential for contact, you know, victims reaching out and wanting to know what's, you know, what what's happening, what's the status and, and this and that, and they want people trained in, in those aspects of dealing with those types of things. So it's a, just another step, another thing that we have to stay on top of. And like I said, they'll, they always, they keep popping up. Which is good. Yeah, I mean, it's all, the advancement, especially in a, a category like that, is always a good thing. Mm -hmm. It's just... It's never free, <laughs> so. Of course not. Wouldn't it be nice if the feds and the state sent a check with grant money in it? 
It was just an idea. You can ask your friend Karen next time she comes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is, do you have any tracking of those types of hours and things? How much that does add up to in a year? And and if year to year, it's kind of a similar number. No, no. no. It's 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 the same as you know with with fires and things like that. Mm -hmm. There's just no way to predict when a, a sexual assault is going to happen. Oh no 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 no! I'm not talking about sexual assaults. Oh. I'm just talking about these unfunded mandates. These oh, things no. popping up and like an <laughs> officer spends ten percent of their time. No no. It, we have yeah. to wait for the mandate to come down before we could even look at data like that. But um, that was just I use that as. An and example. I'm just using it as like things pop up. We have to address them. How much time a week or a year are you spending on that roughly or can we factor it somehow in as like that's a budget item or something i don't know you no, know I don't or is think it just part of the just job because, like yeah, this is part of the job it's part of the job every job has things like that it's that part of the help. job and, and the and the other thing i should say is you know obviously no one likes to hear the term unfunded mandate but yeah. generally speaking generally speaking not in every case uh, it's usually moving in a positive direction you know not, not in every case, like I said, but it's always something positive that we're willing to take on. We realize that there is a need for it and we have to do it. Uh, but in order, but predicting that, it's like predicting the weather in New England. Mm -hmm. We have to put it under miscellaneous. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's one of that's that, that in, in, in all the, all the work that we've done over the years in, in fixing the overtime problem that we have had, it is no longer an issue that our, you know, our overtime budget is sucked up by what it shouldn't be sucked up by. Those are the types of things that the overtime budget is for. The, the training budget and the overtime budget, those are the types of things that, that, it, that it should be used for and we do now <coughs> use it for. Mm -hmm. But like I said, predictability along those lines is yeah. hard. Speaking of grants. Got to put you on the spot. Yeah. I got a question about um, Narcan. Yeah. It's been about, what, a year since it's been rolled out, roughly, something like that? Two. Two years? Two, okay. I think. Is uh, any idea offhand how many times it's been administered by police officers, not by medics? Uh, I can get it. Okay. I, I actually, uh, we we were collecting the data for, um, you know, so that we could, they actually require data collection. Okay. Um, so I don't have it offhand. I know we have used it many times fire department also um and, used and, and the medics times. yeah and okay. he's actually you know an officer has been there and he's actually taken it and administered it okay. um, we have used it uh, matter of fact we i just had to turn my old one in today and get a new one because they were expiring and they were replacing us replacing one new ones yeah no i think it's a great program i just got questions from people of how, how often we're actually using. i'd be it. happy yeah. i'd be happy to dig sometimes it up. when you think about it you don't just Always use just one. Yeah. Yeah. Two or three. It's quite frequently actually. Yeah. You'd be surprised. Yeah. 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 Be surprised. They, in, originally when they were showing us the t statistics to become involved in this program, um, because of the high amount of hotels that we have in town, yeah. Hadley was actually one of the higher rated towns as far as Narcan uses when transporting. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately that's that's the only kind of data that they're able to collect right now because if you're, you know, they have to check that box on the medic, you know, on the, what do they call it? On the run sheet. Um, but yeah, it's quite frequent. No, it's a great program. It's only getting worse, so it's good, good that we have it. So. Are you going to include two, like sometimes state police respond and they use theirs too? Well, I was, I was more, I don't know, I'm not, I don't know how your stats break down. Basically, I, I just want to be able to answer the question of how often the police department's using it versus medics. The data, that, the, data that I, the data that I can give to you is what the Hadley Police Department is using and the fire department, because okay. yeah. it's so on it's the same combined ground. It'll be combined. <laughs> okay. um, but I can, um, the, I, I can probably reach out to um, Hampshire Hope and get yeah, and it, data it's not that critical. It's just general the general area information to push out there. That's yeah. awesome. So are we still getting it for mm -hmm. no. under the Not only do we get the grant, not only do we get the free Narcan, but they actually give us a mini, what they call a mini grant annually uh, for training, uh, overtime, covering overtime for officers and things like that. The first year it was 5,000 and last year it was 4,000. Um, that is slowly declining just because they're running out of money as the grant rolls on, but they intend on still being able to supply us with the actual Narcan itself. So it's free. 
There is legislation right now that's a little bit of concern at the chief's level for mandating that all frontline apparatus have it. Um, that's kind of a, it's a bill that's being reviewed right now, but there's concerns on that just because of the prohibitive cost. It, would be, it wouldn't be part of the, you know, what's given to <laughs> the police department. So, so I don't it's know called an unfunded mandate. I don't, know <laughs> if, I don't know if Mass already has it, but on the federal level, every first responder, they're requiring to carry it yeah. very soon. So there's more mandates. Coming. They give us enough that each uh, firefighter and each officer can carry their own on their person for themselves in the event that they're exposed, and also one in the duty bag and the gear bag so to administer to uh, patients. Actually, there's prescriptions out there now that uh, physicians are giving to known abusers, you know, especially if they have to have extra narcotics, they'll give them a script for Narcan. The have. district attorney has actually adjusted the MOU that we have with them that we are allowed to distribute uh, if, if we see a need. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that any of the officers have done that yet, but mm -hmm. they're, they're, that is allowed. We can't just hand it out. Yeah. All right. And get scripts too. So. Any other questions? Anything else? No. Thank okay. you, Mike. Thank you. Fire, if you can finish with me. Thank you, Mike. So Mike hit, hit a bunch of the topics of the regionalization and all that. Same same, same stuff for us. Um, some of the strengths for, for us this year that were, was added in my in my SWOT analysis, obviously, is the, the ALS ambulance service, the coverage that we have 24-7 now. Um, with that being under the control of the fire chief, it's really added another whole layer to the fire department with outreach, with you know covering details, going to the soccer games, going into the schools, things like that. So that's been huge for us. Um, I just wanted to mention, I changed improved radio equipment, so our, definitely our radio equipment is improved, but we have under weaknesses our communication side of it. So there's equipment versus being able to communicate back, back and forth. However, one of the uh, opportunities we have is working with you on uh, capital planning. So that is in capital planning to try and make an improvement to that. And we're working feverishly on that as well. Um, another another strength is the Ambulance Oversight Committee. I can tell you that um, there is not a day where everything is reviewed by multiple eyes for, for, for calls that occur. So from action ambulance reviewing patient care reports, to the supervisor that we have in-house that works, who's reviewing it, to us if any issues come up. Uh, Molly can attest to the fact that we bring every piece of information to those oversight committees. And there's there's really nothing that's not brought up if there's a concern, and it's usually handled the same day. Um, uh, we have some new notification systems that are in place now that are, be, that are quite helpful for our, our first responders. So um, sometimes you're at work and your pager is not gonna pick up that stuff so we have uh, apps now that uh, first responders if they're coming back into town they'll have updated information on calls that might be in process that they can then respond to and we have a little bit a little bit better of an idea of who might be able to respond um, for our call force so that's that's good information uh, the new North Hadley fire station that's in process that's definitely a strength uh, for relieving some of the uh, storage and equipment issues that we have in our downtown station, uh, and then also as the as the as the town grows and some some future programs that we're we're looking at, uh, we also have the enhanced record uh, management system in place. So all of our our efforts reports that are required by the state now are no longer handwritten; uh, they're all done by computer, and they give us really good breakdowns of data. I can tell you as of today. Uh, your fire department has responded to 1,139 calls, which is something that we would have been nowhere near that number not having that type of tracking so software. So you'll be getting all that information as well. Uh, the capital program is another strength for us, in my opinion. It's really, uh, you guys have been very kind along with the Municipal Building Committee for putting together plans for making some repairs and corrections in the, in the public safety complex. There's there's been a lot of issues over there that have, have been quite quite a burden. Gary Berg, uh, the Municipal Building Committee, Finance Committee, Capital Planning has really stepped up to try and help us alleviate some of those issues. Uh, for weaknesses, so some of them are highlighted because they are, they are improving, but we can still consider them a weakness because they're not completed. Um, 
So you can see all of those. Uh, one of the things is inadequate staffing is still on the list for the evening shift. So after 6 p.m., we go back to call force. The call force numbers are down. We are actively recruiting all the time. I have some opportunities that I'll, I'll bring up uh, in a few minutes, but uh, we're still we're still low on, on response. So it's still myself, the deputy, certain few that go out at two o'clock in the morning, and it's it's tough. It's tough. Um, selective response by certain members. We still have that issue. Um, you know, I, I don't really have a way to crack that nut. People like to fight fires, but we don't have a lot of fires. Um, we have a lot of emergency calls. We have a lot of car accidents. We have a lot of smaller smaller incidents. And sometimes it's tough to get people um, to get up when they have to go to work the next day or they're home with their families, and I, I get that. Um, so for opportunities, uh, Tim was talking about one of them, the Enhanced Re Records Management System. So the viewpoint or point that they're talking about or whichever system they're talking about would be for, would be huge for us to be able to uh, implement, put all of our, our permits and everything online so that folks have it all up front. And then they were talking about it today in the department head meeting with the ability to potentially use uh, you know credit cards, so actual payment being done as part of this as well, which would, would uh, certainly free up some time for having to process checks and get them in in a timely fashion. <laughs> well, they already so, have that in the <coughs> collector's office anyway. But it's not for it's not for our, our permitting and it would be difficult to do and we were discussing it expanding today. Expanding on that? What's that? Expanding on that would we're looking at holding off until we, we look into these these processes so it's under one one management program that would actually encompass the you know, police, uh, building fire police if they have anything as well. Uh, other opportunities, partnership with UMass EMS. Uh, we're we're looking into potentially tapping into their EMTs. Uh, safer grant, so that's another option. Uh, East Hampton just received a, a safer grant for six additional firefighters, which you know I think we should be in discussions with our, you know, the five-year implementation plan for potential of overnight or full-time, 24/7 coverage of looking down that road again. I think because of what the town has put forward, you remember how we applied for the safer grant when we tried to get the state staffing. Um, I've had conversations at, at our fire chiefs conferences and by by us stepping up and doing this, regardless of where we are at with our with our budgets, with our funding, they're seeing that we're really making that effort and there's they can see that it's a burden for us to try and add additional staffing and there's ways of wording this so we have some contact information on trigger words and things like that that might be helpful in us applying for that when we decide to do that. Uh, other opportunities, the 10-year capital plan, I think is great to get that out there. We have stuff that's been in the capital plan for a number of years now, so folks have a really good understanding of where we're at. And then the other big one for us is the Hopkins Academy, the Public Safety One course that's in the process right now that we're teaching daily. Um, we've already recruited one, and we have a potential of a couple others who are interested in coming on board. Uh, this was started uh, in court, you know, last year with Gage and Liam, who put together the Junior Firefighter Program. They were coming over as part of outreach with Hopkins um, internships and doing stuff around the station. You remember they built out uh, the to-go bags and helped out with a number of other projects at the station as well. So it's a good recruitment tool where we're getting some 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 response, which is which is really exciting. Uh, some threats for us, again, unfunded mandates for us, it's the OSHA regulation. Uh, I can tell you, uh, we had discussed um, as part of the capital planning, putting in funding towards that. Uh, the grant did come out today for the gear washer that we were talking about, so it's highly competitive. They've, uh, the governor did put out um, $100,000, but it's broken down by over the next three years. So it's very competitive, and you pretty much have to have nothing or something that's really not compliant with NFPA standard, which we, we do have, but we do have something. So we'll see how that works out for the first year. Um, and then all the other the other unfunded mandates with permitting and changes to codes and how we have to uh, be certified for certain things. And it's it's just, it's a lot, it's, it's nonstop. And uh, like I said, I just received the updates to our fire code, uh, which will, certainly impact not only you know building and fire but also up at the planning board level with uh, 
just sizes of fire lanes, for example, that are that are changing or updated. Uh, Threat, uh, other threats are just the commercial and residential growth, uh, especially the senior population. We have a lot of senior, uh, we have a very high senior rate, which is increasing our EMS uh, response and call volume. <coughs> uh, drug, alcohol related overdoses. Uh, you'd be surprised, like we were just talking about. I'm sure Mike can get that information, but we can also request that data from uh, the action, action ambulance side uh, as well. Um, aging equipment and potential loss failure. That's in there strictly just for, I, I think we're working towards it, so we're hoping that that ballot question will, will be a positive after them if it passes the town meeting for the generator. We're really concerned about that. We wanna make sure that that happens. Uh, and then also our airbags that we, we no longer have in service for as part of our extrication equipment. Um, the other part is there's been a significant increase in Connecticut River activities with folks purchasing land, setting up camps, setting up uh, trailers, boating, camping, stuff going on on the river, just excessive calls there, working with the task force on trying to keep people from uh, indulging too much and operating you know, boats on the river, but also some of these concerts that we're seeing out on the river that are you know, resulting in us having to be out there and providing EMS coverage to, to make sure people aren't, aren't, aren't getting injured. Um, New construction hazards, so these lithium ion storage, battery storage, and also going into residential homes um, and other large sto larger storage facilities that we have to keep up on. And then increased student population. We have a lot of houses that are being you know, bought up by folks to, to turn into to student rental property, which is not, it's not a bad thing. It's just, it's kind of hard to track that. And we need to make sure that we're working with the university to uh, ensure that Folks are being protected. That smoke detectors aren't getting taken down because ultimately it's going to impact us if we're if we're dealing with with calls because parties are, you know, ripping detectors off the ceiling or unsafe practices um, in those homes, which could impact us. When you're saying that there's no, you at the end of that sentence you said um, with no accountability. So, where's the lack of accountability? Do we not have the enforceable? laws in place or is I should it say like limited so you might have um, you might have three people that sign a lease but have four other people that sublet under them right. which the even the owner might not know about right. so it's that's that kind of accountability where we don't have a true understanding of how many people might be in a home yeah. and Am Amherst has certainly dealt with this over the years mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's certainly something to look at to well there used Amherst to be a law no more than four unrelated people in an apartment. That law is still in place, but it's it it's, break it. it's I mean, and then the how question do you, is how, how do you do enforce it? Right, right. Yeah. So. And is that something, Tim? That can you talk to um, Rob or whoever over in Amherst? Because they have just one person that inspects all the student housing, right? Right. Right. But, and I know that this particular issue came up, and I thought that they came up with some. Yeah, and rules. I've talked to Chief Mason about it, and they've brought it up at some of the UMass meetings. Yeah. Um, and it is it's problematic all over. I, this, this goes back to multiple problems associated with zoning and everything else, especially in, in Amherst, that has created the problem for the surrounding towns. And it's a very complex problem to try to deal with. Uh, and it's not going to be solved overnight. But yeah, we know of a number of um, landlords that have made this a problem for us. Uh, but we also, there are some out there that, that right. understand the issues and want to deal with them correctly. Right. But well, it's also some that are being taken advantage yeah. of. Right. right. So it's not well, always the land, yeah. you know, certainly it's not mm -hmm. always the landlord. It's, Oh, Folks my boyfriend over. stayed with me. Oh, my boyfriend stayed over. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's easy. Mm -hmm. But then you're getting infringing on people's rights, and right. it's yeah. it's a complex issue, and it's not it's mm -hmm. it's something that's got to be done regionally, and not not what's been happening piecemeal. We have done we have done outreach programs. So the PD, especially, you know, they brought in or offered up people to come in and sit down and we would go through some fire safety stuff, some, you know, the cake bylaw and all mm -hmm. that stuff. Mm -hmm. So some of the bigger rental agencies, we offered that up and 
that's certainly something we could we could do again. But as far as tracking it, sometimes you know you have a parent that'll buy a home to put their kid up oh, in sure. for the four year term school. And, and we done. just talked about that when I was away because my friend lives in Amherst and she says that it happens over there all the time. The, the, and she's a uh, professor. She says they just buy the houses and then done with it in four years they get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, yes. Yeah. I mean, when I was on patrol, the only time we ever used to catch them is if we'd go there for a house party, have to break the house party up, mm -hmm. end up inside, and then you start to see violations, yeah, call them yeah. out, and then we find, you know, beds in the basement and all kinds yeah. of other stuff where, where it's clear and obvious. But other than that, you know. the only way is through the rental inspection program, uh, like Amherst has. Uh, I, I think that that has really helped them tremendously to deal with a lot of the violations and deal with a lot of the major parties. Uh, you're always going to have some of it, but um, the three of us working together, but there has to, it has to be regionalized to some extent. There has to be some type of a rental agreement for everyone that's consistent throughout. So why, why are we having the problem? Because Amherst started the, the enforcement. It's easy, easier for all uh, these major companies. They've jump, jumped over the line. Right, that's why we're seeing so much. But that's right why I was wondering now. if we could coordinate it with Amherst. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I've actually spoken with UMass before. So mm -hmm. before before even Amherst put that, implemented that, yeah. just, just on the emergency, emergency management side of the house. So when we were talking about dispensing <laughs> sites, this whole population that we don't know about. So if if we have the need to set up a shelter or a dispensing site, how do we how do we know how many students are going to be coming from UMass, Amherst College, Hampshire College, all these other, you know, we, we don't have a number on that. So we're trying to figure out a way that we might be able to to populate that. So it's you know it's something ongoing, but it's so so in flux. It's, it's but they it's don't even have their addresses um, when people come in where I work, they don't list their addresses right. here. They're listed where they come from. Right, the address. Yeah. Down Worcester, you know, yeah. not not here in the area. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to get it that yeah. way unless you get a call from some neighbor, somebody saying they're a the party, and then you have the right to intervene and go in that house. But up, I think, up until that point, you really don't have the authority unless there's a property. No, and I'm surprised you master the I like uh, residency program that the students have to sign up well they, they have I mean they have a couple of different mm -hmm. programs but none of none of them that I can think of have any parts of them which are would, accurate <clears throat> yeah well not only that but none of them really delve into this yeah. it's more of parties and it's uh, they have mm -hmm. you know opposite their ethics code where if they get in trouble they get jammed up over at the school you know stuff like that none of it really has to do yeah. with residency issues and like you said from other parts of the state they, they mm -hmm. use their home addresses so. yeah they all do well primarily the, the the zoning around here doesn't allow these large companies that come in and deal with uh, student um, housing to come on in and set up these larger we'll say um, gated communities that deal with the students it's been extremely successful in a lot of the other larger universities. We don't have that ability because the zoning has uh, stopped that. You, if mean like it, a, you mean like like a brandy wine type thing over in Amherst? Is that what you're talking about? Well, they're, they're actually gated now. They're actually companies that come in and set it up and they deal with all the um, security issues yeah. and everything. They actually have their own forces. To deal with, oh. but you know we're we're seeing our first one, but it's for the uh, the the upper graduate classes down here where the old motel was. But there's not enough housing for all the students, so they and why you know think about it. The the people that are making money don't want the university to set these up because it takes all these houses that they've purchased over the years out of the mix for the students. And you know, that's why our, our, our rents are so high. That's why we have such social problems uh, trying to keep 
peop, um, that, that social class that deals with um, retail space and restaurants. They can't get enough people to even um, have these jobs because there's no place to live for them. Yeah. They can't afford these. So it's a huge problem yeah. Yeah. that we have to deal with, and it's a regional issue. Mm -hmm. But until yeah. the university starts getting these type of um, developments in for the students, we're always going to have these problems. And with the force that we have, we can't deal with it yeah. at all. Okay. Only when it becomes very problematic. But it's very difficult to get into these houses now, not like it used to be. Yeah. Any other questions for Fire Chief? You guys? Good? I think one of the things that we're hearing over and over in terms of threats are the unfunded mandates. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll hear it from Chris when he presents next week. Um, you heard it from me, you heard it from these gentlemen. Um, we're meeting with our legislative delegation on the 21st, and I think this must be part of the discussion mm -hmm. yeah, that absolutely. we have done a survey in town, and this is across the board with all the departments. <laughs> Well, let's, sure let's not remember, report. let's remember too, all those unfunded mandates. You change the plumbing code. I just had this happen to me, so this is how I know. And then I want a new sink put in in part of my house or my facility. And all of a sudden, even though I got a plumbing permit to put other things in, I've got to change all that to bring it up to code. Mm -hmm. So it's like this cascading effect that affects everybody, not only you guys, but business owners, homeowners, everything else. How about the schools with the schools. doors? Yeah. I mean, that's a primary so example yeah. of a huge issue that we have to face. They have mandates every year. I mean, yeah. that, that hasn't been anything new. I mean, but, and everybody has had mandates. Yeah. I mean, that's six the nature of the week. Six here on the 21st. Yeah. Right. The meeting's here. Right here. Yeah, thank Temple. you. Yeah. Anything else? I think that's a great point. Um, okay, thank you all for doing this and putting it together and coming tonight to present to us. Thank you, appreciate it. Can we, are we going to get into? Do you want to say anything about the fire substation before we? Oh yeah. Do, that do you, you want to do that real quick? I was going to yeah. do the Shala thing to get that done, but we could we could do the fire sub senior, or at least the fire substation. Do you want to say anything on that? Or? Yes. Um, so things are on schedule. They're looking to hopefully start filling with concrete the, the flooring in the next week or two. They're finishing up the radiant floor heat. Uh, we do have a groundbreaking scheduled for the 23rd. Uh, it was going to be 5 o'clock, but I've had a request to me to move it to 5.30, so I'm going to see if we can do that. Uh, I'll let you know on that. Um, so we'll be getting that information out. And Everything's pretty much status quo. There's no additional requests for, for money at this point. We have all the updated numbers for, um, we've already approved the uh, insulation upgrade for the weight of the trucks. So that's, a, that's about it. Everything's been smooth. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very much. You say it's at 5 or 5.30? Right now it's scheduled for 5, but okay. it's, do, we have, do, you have a, do you have a select over that night or? No. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, we, I was asked if we could move it to 5:30, just because it's hard for to get out of get to back to Hadley. So if it was 5:30, I 5:30, five, I can't make it. Okay, so. <laughs> so 5:30. Okay, so I'll, I'll let the OPM know that. Perfect. So. You're gonna have some lights up there or something. <laughs> we'll, we'll set the ladder <laughs> truck up. <laughs> Bring the fire truck up to hang lights. <laughs> thank you. Thank yeah, you, thank Mike. you. I appreciate it. Uh, okay. Well, want to get. Yeah. Let's do the Shala Agricultural and then come back because I got a bunch of stuff to go through there with uh, the senior center. So, oh, you do. We can we can do it. Okay. But let's get some other stuff off our list here. Sure. Uh, the Shala APR property. Mm -hmm. uh, Kristen was supposed to come, and is this just for voting on the conservation restriction there? This is the same parcel we've been working on, right? Yeah. Yeah. So why wasn't this? Part yeah. Of the is this thing? anything new here? What's this about? Grantor, Isaac. Is anybody? 
Do they own that property? Did I just own the Jala property? How's this working? Or butters or what is this? It looks like they're granting to the Hadley Conservation Commission a conservation restriction. Yeah, Conservation Commission was supposed to meet last night. They had a posting problem, so they're meeting next Tuesday. I talked to the conservation agent and the conservation commission is in support of this and in fact they've already voted to um, uh, approve this, but they haven't voted to actually sign it, so they have to go through that formality. Um, so should we wait for them or? Uh, I'm confused on why wait till next week and these, get some more information. Why are these people's name on it when it's Jala's property? Can anybody clarify that for me? Yeah, no, I, I can't. I don't know. No. Neither no relation. Sierra no. number. So why don't we table this yeah. and uh, get more clarity on it? Um, and then and then we'll bring it up. Yeah, because it's Dijek on both documents. So. Yeah. So I'm not sure what that's about. Yeah. I'm, I think the docs are the same. One's just a PDF and one's a word. Is that all it is? They're yeah, the same. That's all it is. Yeah. So why don't we? And I didn't. Kristen didn't come. I didn't know if she was going to or not tonight. I was. Yeah, I expected this. Happened. So maybe well, that would have helped. Uh, provide some more information. Table it then. So yeah, let's just table this. Let's put this on the agenda for the next select board meeting. And, uh, I think she'd be here by now, don't you? I would think so, yeah. yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, and, and then we'll just take it up then. Okay. Uh, okay. So how about special town meeting warrant here? Make our final recommendations for the warrant. So we are asked to sign the warrant and assign speaking responsibilities for <coughs> each warrant article. Can I uh, make a motion to move the meeting first before we get to the, yeah. the warrant? That would be good. <laughs> oh, yeah, so you want to do that? <laughs> Let's change the date of I'll that. make a motion. We don't have no money. We can't have this meeting. <laughs> I'll make a motion that we change special town meeting to take place on November 7th, mm -hmm. 2019. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And just so the viewing public knows, this is just waiting for finalizing our free cash number. We are not going to have it in time to post the meeting within two weeks. So we just need to postpone special town meeting a week to have that number in place and be able to finalize our budget. When do they expect it? I'm sorry. When do they is expect it? it? Um, I'm going to be meeting with the accountant on Friday. And have uh, it in hand or something very close to that at that time. Does he have all the information he needs yet? He has all the information that he needs um, and uh, I've asked him to reach out to me if there's anything that's going to be delaying him. Okay. So. okay. so the town meeting warrant. So the other, the other bit of information is that the um, uh, finance committee met last night and they approved all of the uh, financial articles. So even though we are not in a position to say that we have balanced the budget, we think we have balanced the budget and based upon the strength of that, they have approved the budget uh, adjustment, the enterprise fund adjustment, um, all the transfers uh, and the capital article. Uh, with the sole exception of the double drum roller, where they make no recommendation. They just want to forward that to town meeting and have the voters have their, uh, make their choice. Uh, but they're done, capital is done, CPA is done. Uh, so we're in good shape, except that we don't have to pre cash certified. Select okay. board typically um, makes recommendations for or against um, articles, uh, with the exception of CPA. So we're going to do that now? Yeah. David, do you just want to walk us through and then we can vote the uh, best right. way to do it? And do we need to open the meeting or, or open the warrant to do this? Don't no. Need, don't don't need to open the okay. warrant. Um, we just need to do each article, yay or nay, and yeah. move along. So article 1, general fund. 
Article one and Article two kind of go together, the general fund and the, um, and the enterprise fund. So the general fund, um, we are uh, balanced, we think. We have made a number of adjustments, which are summarized in this package here. Um, for um, total general government, there's an increase of $4,600. This is a redeployment of clerical help um, in order to clerical help where it's needed and asked for. Public safety, we're making the adjustment to the building inspector based upon his planned retirement and payout of benefits, uh, as well as bringing in somebody at a higher rate of pay for the last two or three months of the fiscal year. Uh, that number is 22346 And then for the fire, there's a $31,500 increase that's based upon the agreements they reached with the fire chief for uh, restoring the clerical help, the administrative help there, as well as uh, his salary adjustment that was negotiated. No change in education. For public works, there's a net gain of $12,000, and that's based upon the reorganization uh, that was presented by Chris Okafor, as well as his salary adjustment. That covers everything? That covers everything. Um, uh, the enterprise funds, there's a uh, uh, 23670 increase for the three enterprise funds. Again, most of that is uh, by the reorganization proposed by Chris Okafor and approved by this board. Um, but uh, some software upgrades for TV, uh, for Hadley Media, and then a, a reduction in um, clerical help in the sewer division. David, I'm sorry, did, uh, yeah, <clears throat> so I've got this, but do you have, like, are the changes listed somewhere? Or? Yes, uh, I'm just giving you the broad contour that we have the details if you need them. These are all things that we've already done previously. Yeah, no, I was just wondering, I'm, I'm looking, I thought I thought there was going to be something on here that was just highlighting the, whatever the changes are for the special time yes. meeting. So this column H shows the increase or decrease oh, okay. between the annual time meeting and the Oh, okay, all right. I, I'm, I was looking over at J, and that's what I was like. No, not J. Okay, gotcha. J, I, J. <laughs> Go to H. <laughs> All right, for human services, the uh, Board of Health, we're uh, providing them with clerical help so that they can get their higher order functions uh, done. We have a problem of them covering all the bases in terms of inspections. So we'd want to uh, provide them with clerical help that will give them the, uh, the support that they need uh, to do a better job. Uh, Council on Aging, 13,000, is, this is uh, the increase for Violet is the interim, as well as the increase of hours for the uh, Council on Aging program coordinator. Um, Park and Rec Commission, nine, $600. This is something that I thought we had covered at the annual time meeting. We were gonna use some off, uh, off uh, general fund uh, on figures to pay that uh, position. Um, and it turns out we can't do that. I was trying to be more clever than I was able to, to be. So that's an increase there. But that's something we talked about at the, at the uh, budget um, process. Uh, debt, there's gonna be no change in the bottom line, but because we have got the uh, better uh, interest rates through the AAA bond rating, we can apply $35,000 from interest to principal. So no change in the bottom line, um, but a redeployment between uh, principal and debt of, uh, of $35,000. <coughs> so 
So I need to, uh, I have in my notes here, a little red circle means I have to make that change. That's oh, okay. Something that uh, is not transparent here. Um, and then the only other thing is the overlay. I've decided to drop that by 5,000. Um, so it went from 55 down to 50. Um, and Dan Sedonic and I are talking about that. Uh, but <coughs> I don't expect that number really to change. So all told, the, um, the changes are plus 117,683. Uh, and again, this all depends upon free cash being certified before we can go to, get, uh, before we can say that we're actually balanced. So if you want to defer this discussion on this, I can certainly understand finance committee supported 3-0 in <coughs> recommending this. Is there next week? Next week. And we don't have a special town meeting until the 7th, so we could easily just put this on hold until next week. Yeah, I feel more comfortable with yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, I, I think I feel more comfortable with that, too. We could probably do the other articles, though. Like yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right, so Article 1 and Article 2 we're putting on hold for right now. Do you want to assign speaking assignment uh, responsibilities to these two articles? You've, in the past, you've asked me to explain them. That sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, does anybody want to jump on that? All right, happy to do it. Uh, transfer of fund balances, Article 3. This is on page 6. Starting on 6, going to page 7. And this is a housekeeping article where we take uh, unproductive balances and return them to the box on which they came, or we reduce the borrowing authorization in order to take clutter away from the charting accounts. I don't think we have to read them one by one either. If people have this account meeting. No, yeah. we did well combining things last time. Around. I did. Yeah. So yeah. Don't we have things we can combine for consent? Yeah, so if you look at the bottom of page 7, there's the motion. It's one sentence, and that's it. Okay. We normally put the, at the annual, we put this on kind of article on the consent agenda, but given that we don't have any other consent items, it would take longer to go through the consent process than a straight up vote. I'll make a motion to accept what's here on the um, transfer fund, fund balances. Second. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And who would like to speak to us? I think you're already up there talking. I'm on. I'm going to go out with a plane in it. Yeah, and then the other one. <laughs> the, the next one is just a borrowing adjustment. So All right, uh, Article 4 on page uh, eight. 8. All right, so we, if we have surplus free cash, we typically put it into the capital stabilization account. Don't know what that number is. We're hoping that we're going to hit our target of 75,000. Um, Do you want to hold on that one since we well, don't have Well, I think the principle is pretty straightforward. If we have surplus, we put it in the capital stabilization and protect it because that takes a two-thirds majority vote to get it out of there, whereas free cash is a simple majority. So it's a way of protecting the money. So based upon that principle, would you be willing to take a stand on it? Sure, once I know what the dollar amount is. Yeah. All right. Let's just hold on that one, too. <laughs> That's what okay. I was saying. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. And who wants to speak to that? Uh, I can do that. Okay. Or you can do it while Molly you're can do it. Some other people up there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, capital. Um, Article 5. So moved. Do we have to do uh, these individually? So this occupied a lot of attention by the, uh, by the Finance Committee last night. Again, they yeah. recommended everything there except for the double drum compact room where they are neutral. Um, but they do want to bundle, they do want to bundle as many 
um, articles together in order to, to move this along. Um, so the cash ones can be handled as one motion. The borrowing within the levy can be handled um, in a finite number of motions. But they want to have the debt exclusion uh, uh, borrowing to be handled item by item. Okay. If you add that all up, that's 14 motions. Yeah. Um, Holy mother of mercy. So by comparison, last year we had a 10 motion capital article, so it will take a little bit of time, but 1410 is not that big of a change. Yeah. So is that like guys up there for Are we doing these additional motions just because that's what they would like to see, or is there a reason to do that? Both. Um, so wherever I can combine motions together, I'll try to make it into one <coughs> borrowing au authorization, but I've got to do like by like, and sometimes I don't have that choice based upon what's here. All right, so what's so going to, in all of these motions, what's going to increase the tax rate? That would be the on page nine, the uh, debt excluded. The debt excluded. All the debt excluded. Yeah, everything else. So yeah, that's, that's why you do those individually, because well, then you one. vote on each checking one. Checking these off, because I want to see them, and, and in doing these, we need to be sure we know what the uh, cost impact is going is. to be, yeah. the impact yeah. is on everything. Yeah. Combined or individually? It doesn't matter. It's going individually. To be in I guess individually. It's probably going to be individually, because yeah. if they're going to go individually, then Correct. they're going to want to know what it's going to cost them. Correct. Yep. And then you can say what the total of all of them is going to cost you. So there's one thing that's not on here that we discussed in capital. Um, the school has two projects they want to do, Hopkins Academy Girls Locker Room Upgrade and Hopkins Academy Univent Replacement. And they're going to go for MSBA funding, grant funding. Okay. But the thing is, in order for us to do those projects, it would be beneficial if we had the debt excluded borrowing votes when we did this, so that at the annual town meeting we could vote the projects in and then start them in the summer. Okay. Uh, otherwise, so it's, otherwise we have to delay them and then they might not start until, you know, like another they, year. When are they meeting with MSBN? They're putting the grants applications in. They've already submitted the grant application. It's been We're submitted. Hear about it in mid December. Right. Yeah. Not until next December. This December. Oh, this December. Twenty nineteen. Yeah. Could use all that crack selling money. <laughs> <laughs> that was oh boy. Right there. Uh, <laughs> so how do we get that on here? Is what I'm. What I'm asking. So they've asked it for it not to be on the uh, fall time. They don't want it at all. No, but the debt exclusion vote. We yeah, but I thought once that. I thought once you walked Danny through the timing of it, she changed her mind and said no, it should be. So they have a construction season which is from June to August. Right. Okay. We have a town meeting coming up on May seventh. Right. Um, that's when they would take the vote on the debt exclusion articles, mm -hmm. not the ballot vote. Yeah, so if the grant was approved, <coughs> they would go on an annual meeting anyway. There's plenty of time. But if they vote at so the May meeting, then the debt exclusion vote can't take place. And you made the point that you wouldn't take, have time. It can occur at the annual election, which is April 14th. Oh, right. Then so there was a conversation about we reversing would, it. We would reverse the order. Yeah. Uh, of voting, so yep. you do the ballot vote first, April 14th, and then May 7th, which is within the 90-day window, you would uh, have the town meeting vote, and assuming both of those pass, they could be uh, bidding on May 8th. Uh, but it's how to explain it. <laughs> I kind of think we should wait then, because that if we're going to reverse the, the two, if the ballot vote doesn't pass, then there's no reason to vote on it at, at town meeting, right? I, absolutely. Yeah. So they want to do, uh, at the beginning of the presentation of the capital article, the school's going to get up and say, Speak to it. Yeah. They have are. these two big projects coming in. Um, it's maybe going to be funded at 50% by grant money, 
we can't ask you for money right now, not knowing the impact of a grant that you received or not. So this is what our plan is to bring it to the end of time meeting for the vote on the ballot beforehand. So okay. We have to take the straight right. out of education. We haven't done that before. But Oh, really changing, so really changing the way we do things. Uh, okay. I mean, I'll do the capital since I'm like the uh, capital committee. Sounds like a plan there. And I love going up there and boring people for half an hour of reading these things. Speed it up there. See people. Never mind the half an hour. Yeah. Um, so you have a motion and a second. Uh, oh, to. For these guys, yeah. so you, yes. do you want to look at anything individually, or just ready to go for it? Let's just do it. Just ready to go for it. So moved. Okay. Second. All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And I didn't know if Chris was here tonight to That's talk to this at all. Yeah, I thought he was. I thought he was going to be here to ask for something else, but I guess maybe not. No. It's. I mean, you could text him, but and he can come back, but. Uh, can see. No. Okay. okay. I mean, you can if you want, but I. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, next week. yeah we have next week. Yeah. No. Uh, okay. Article six, North Hadley Ballfield petition. Motion to approve. <laughs> <laughs> Our motion to recommend. Second. This is the switching of the. Right. This is the same as what we did at the annual town meeting, right? Mm -hmm. All right, sounds good. Okay. Are we gonna? This is a petition, so. This we petitioned the uh, the legislature. No, but I'm saying this was wasn't this petition? Oh no. Okay. No, we put it on there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so our recommendation. All in favor? Aye. 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 You're at aye. Aye. John? aye. aye. Nothing. Who would like to speak to it? I was going to say, can we delegate that to uh, Ms. Barstow, who wanted to speak to it as from the historical perspective? Or is I think somebody from the select board should say something, and then she can and speak she to can it if she wants. Yeah. Invite her. yeah. I mean, does anybody want to do it? <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll I, mean I don't mind necessarily yeah. doing it, but I also, I, if you speak to it, I can always speak to it too and just yeah, say, I mean, I mean, more than one of us can say something. I mean, we tried to get it done last time. So yeah. I, I think we were on the same page of wanting to get it done. Yeah. We got to do something or else, and, and yeah. The more and more public input we have, yep. I think everybody understands what's going on with it now. So, yeah. I'll, so I'll, put I'll the BF on that. Yep. Okay. BF. Okay. Conservation restriction. Article 7, Kestrel Land Trust. Is this the one for the reservoir? Yes. Okay. 336 so, acres. Yeah, we're. I'll give you the, the quick summary since we don't have the final thing here. Basically, uh, we have a large variety of personalities on the committee. All of us are in agreement, and it protects all rights from bird watching to mountain biking to snowmobiles to ATVs to hunting, fishing, whatever. We're finalizing the language on the 17th. And um, so I will say that um, I think we have something pretty well put together. So um, 17th, and we have a meeting on the 16th. No, we don't. Next week? Yeah. Oh, yeah, the 16th. I'm 16th. thinking the 17th yeah. we canceled. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, since you were willing to make sense for you to stay and talk about Yeah, I'll, I'll, t I'll speak to it. Uh, I was just going to say, though, I maybe yeah, okay this will be a record. model for future parcels of land in town. I was going to say I'd be okay with recommending it at this point even though we don't have the final language um, since I was one of those kind of on the fence people before but mm -hmm. I've been converted. Happens. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So mo motion to recommend. Okay. I'll second that. That's uh, right. You got it. Good. Yeah. Good. Okay. All those in favor to recommend. Uh, to recommend. Aye. Aye. I'm just going to abstain just because I'd like to see it before I vote on it. Yeah. So that's well, my only thing. Otherwise, I'd vote on it. Yeah. I'll pull, I'll pull my motion and we can wait then. Pull my second. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Did you don't derail have to be it. Till the 17th. I know. That's the thing. Yeah. 
but you guys, how's the language going? Like, is it going to be saying, it's presented? Do you think you'll change it on the 17th, or is it pretty much solidified in the 17th? It's pretty much agree? solidified. I mean, we're looking at details. Um, for example, the, the parking area over there has to specify the maximum number or the mas maximum dimensions of a future parking lot that we might install there 200 years from now. So Chris is measuring out to figure out how many spots, because that language has to be in there. So minor details like that. We basically finalized the fact that we're protecting hunting, fishing, mountain biking, all that, all that yeah. kind of stuff there. We're just working on the details of, of what's the maximum size of, say, a, um, a pavilion that we could put on the property, mm -hmm. or what's the maximum park, number of parking spots, things like that. OK. So. And uh, has anybody checked into the water line easement through there also that we've talked about? They are, um, Kestrel has been working, I think, with Sharon as far as what water department resources are there that need yeah. access or usage. OK. So. Well. So would you like me to remake a motion, and then we can just what those that want to vote can. Okay, so I'll yeah. motion to recommend uh, Article 7. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And I'll abstain still. So. No. <laughs> You're saying no? I'm still no. So will it be 3 1 you 1 on that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So who would like to speak to that? I'll speak to that. Uh, okay. Even though I protected your four wheelers? No, I. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen. I'm great. Too many issues with these pieces of property. Right? <laughs> okay, let's move All right, on. All right, Article 8, mitigation of health insurance. So we saved $93,000 in health insurance costs. By law, we have to split a quarter of that with the union, non-union, and active retirees. Um, okay. So. So it's a. Is this a transfer back, basically a refund? Mm -hmm. Motion to recommend. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And who would like to speak to that? Okay. And where are we? Just oh, well, yeah. Hampshire County. Yeah. They, that, that, the state paid it. Really? The, uh, the insurances and all that kind of stuff. Okay. They're still... A You're lot still in it, yeah. there's all still a lot in um, limbo, but the benefits side has been paid. Okay. Yeah, but like the building and all those things, yeah. that's still. Uh, gift funds for school department Hadley kids. Yeah. Is this ready to go? Yeah, it's ready to go. And uh, who's speaking to it? It says uh, revolving fund, but it really means gift fund. So, okay. Um, uh, we can have uh, uh, the school speak to that. Yeah, we can the school speak. Okay. Motion to recommend. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That will be the school. And school or park and rec? Uh, school, I guess. School. School. Okay. school. Yeah, if park and rec needs to say something. And no, Jenny will be there. Or or to. Oh, yeah, she's getting there. Mm -hmm. So she'll be back. Uh, Article she'll 10 be back. through. Now she will be. 10 through. 13, which are CPA articles. Okay. Some years you will uh, endorse these, and some years you don't. I'll make a motion to recommend all the CPA articles. So moved. Second. Whatever you have to do. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're in place, Joyce. Right? <laughs> <laughs> just, just. Uh, I'm trying to move yeah. things along here. Yeah. They're holding me back. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to help. It's not working. Waiting for an all in favor. <laughs> I know, I'm just looking at it. Uh, yeah, all in favor. Aye. 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 And CPA uh, needs to speak to all of these. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, article 14 is the rule change for the water division. Oh, water meter. Okay. Um, take care of the water meter. Just a change in some language. Yeah. I'd be happy to speak to it. I think we'll all get up and speak to this one. Yeah. I vote John. <laughs> he doesn't have anything to say. Do you want to speak to water meters? No, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'll put in my two cents. <laughs> <laughs> two or three. Yeah. Okay, DF. All right, motion to recommend uh, water. 14. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And the rest are planning board articles. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And the petitioned articles on there? Yeah. 
It is. Just so 17. Stormwater is planning board? Stormwater is planning board. 17 is planning board. No, it's not. No, that's, it's not. they were, this is a petitioned article. Oh yeah, that, on the end it says PB, but that's not it, right? I don't see that. So who speaks to that? The petitioners. The petitioners. petitioners. Senior housing? Yeah. Senior yeah. housing map extension. Oh, middle street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the middle street. Yeah. Just basically they weren't going to put a stand, they were just going to... So planning board right. is presenting it? No. no, 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 no. It would be the petition. It would have to be Barry. So Roberts. Barry or um, yeah. his attorney. His attorney. Yeah. Tom Reedy. Um, yeah. It'll have to be approved. To and do they? They're well aware of that thing. Or are you going to reach out to them and make sure? Yeah. So one of the things I do after we've ended up all the responsibilities is I put together a chart and I make sure that everybody has a copy of that and it's highlighted for each department. Mm -hmm. okay. Senior center. Yeah, senior center. So uh, construction is moving along well over there. I've been pretty busy, so I haven't had a chance to attend a lot of the meetings, but just watching the site itself, it's really uh, turning into an actual building over there quickly. Um, I have four PCOs to vote on, one PCO negotiation to vote on, and then an audio visual scope to just agree to send it out for RFP. So, first thing I have is a change order for custom truss hangers. Uh, cost to install custom truss hangers at steel beams as required. That's $4,137.60. Um, the second one is one that I believe we voted on before, but I just want to make sure we did, and that's removing a septic tank and foundation. I talked about that before. That was an additional $1,577.50. Then I have cost to install beam hangers as detailed in Sketch 8 by EDM. Uh, that's some other hangers. That's $1,814.45. And then um, last one is cost to provide additional retaining wall and fencing. Uh, and that's along the southern border. I can tell you a little bit more about that. That's $22,060.52. For what? Almost at 22000 Yeah, so uh, that is uh, additional retaining wall block uh, that's on the south side. Um, by Coach's property? By Coach's property. And because of the height of the retaining wall, they need to add a fence at the top of the wall for fall protection. There is a potential credit for some arbor arborvitaes in the event they can't plant them um, between the fence and the abutter's garage. That wall is really close to his shed or in back of his house, one of the houses there. Um, so can we do one at a time? Uh, yeah, we can I, do one at a time. I also want to just say that um, we do have a finance meeting coming up on October 22nd, uh, just to kind of look over where we're at all in all with the project. And David and I are going to meet with the OPM and the architect to discuss a lot of these structural issues we have and yeah, that's kind of for, that's my first big question. How figure out our strategy. That just seems like a lot of them. Yeah. It does seem like a lot of them. They are adding up. We do have a summary right now of the structural change orders we've had. Um, and we have already talked to the architects some about these and we just need to talk more about what we can do with this. Um, we have nothing I mean, the architect, concrete right now. The architect or the engineer should pick up some of this because yeah. from day one, all the elevations were wrong, they're still wrong, and we just keep paying for them. Uh, yeah. So I just want to make a motion that we approve the septic uh, change order because that's an easy one. That's uh, and that's already been done. Yeah, yeah, that's just that way we're covered. That was the one that we were unclear on. We need to vote on it, right? Maybe it was. Yeah, and that's 
sixteen hundred dollars that was removing something in the ground that they found while they were digging. Yeah, right. So yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah, an easy that's one. There, so that's second, right. Okay, I'll second that. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 The signing is like. And then for the audio visual bit. Well, the audio, so let's go back to that one. Let's stick with the change orders right now. So there's two, let's call them structural change orders because they're kind of similar. There's a custom truss hanger at steel beams as required. This one is older and may have been voted on already by the finance committee because it's a $4,000, so it's under the $10,000. Um, this was one where we didn't have a signed copy, so I just wanted to make sure we had a signed copy, basically. Um, and then we have one that's beam hangers, and that's at $1,814.45. And that's uh, an, an issue where the appropriate truss hangers at the front entry roof framing weren't specified. So I can tell you that for all of these change orders, I'm a no on them, and I'll tell you why. Because we've, we're talking at least $40,000 in change orders here due to uh, engineering, we'll say, miscalculations, mistakes, assumptions, whatever, uh, as well as a surveyor's possible mistake of surveying the entire site location at a foot higher than it actually is, and now we have to build retaining walls. Um, these are professionals that we hired that we need to hold accountable. This, this is not contingency fund activity. The, a contingency fund is to cover the septic tank that we found underground, the asbestos we found underground, things that were unforeseen. Uh, professional making a mistake is, is not a contingency. So, uh, I mean, the OPM is supposed to be working for the town and holding these people accountable. Unfortunately, the OPM also gets money each time a change order is done by charging a percentage. So uh, there has to be a little bit of oversight on our part as well to just to make sure there's enough checks and balances. But we're, we're, we're putting a lot of money out for other people's mistakes right here. Yeah, the response is, is that, you know, we, these are things that were missed in the construction documentation. Um, if they were in the construction documentation, we'd be paying for them anyway. Yes, they'd be slightly less than this whole change order process takes, but we still have to install these items. Um, but who missed them? The, the contractors when they bid on them, or? No, this is, I mean, this is engineering. Design? These aren't, like, some of these weren't in the construction documentation. So that would not be on the contractor, that's on the engineers for not specifying it. But the elevation, um, the elevation issue is, not just an over error, isn't it? That, that's absolutely their fault. Uh, I mean, that, and like that I would said, be a the elevation, that, so that's the elevations a, on the water were wrong, the elevations on the sewer were wrong, right down the line. And the contractor and the GC helped the town out, and luckily they spotted them before they installed what they were supposed to install, and they fixed it, corrected it immediately, which was no extra cost to the town. And, and I appreciate for what those two people did for us, those two companies did for us, working well along with the town, but the engineer oversights and and uh, it, it's just un and the surveyors are just uncalled for, you know. The other issue too is if we don't approve these, we don't that that all may be true, and we can work Aren't they to insured for this. Don't we have bonds out on? They are insured, but then we're going to have to get a legal team. They're going to get have to get a legal team. The whole project's going to come to a standstill if we don't approve these changes. We, we did this with because the they're framing installation on Lorena when the contractor made some. Mistakes. My suggestion is is that we contact our lawyer, town lawyer, and ask them how do we proceed uh, in asking him what we should do. I, I, we don't want to stop the project, but we also want to know how we can um, have uh, some restitution made from the contractor. I'd like a total or the engineer, the, who's ever at fault. 
yeah. of, of all the changes we've yeah. approved since the project has started due to errors and oversights. And because mm -hmm. stuff happens, and I can see a onesie, twosie, you know, from right. different contractors, but when it's a constant, we're talking, at, like I said, at least $40,000 that's right here, not to mention what we've approved in the past. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think we need to contact our lawyer, ASAP. I'd like to table these until next week as far yeah. as approval. Get, get some kind of opinion by next week. And Please. Yeah. And a retaining wall, yes, it could prevent paving and things like that down the line, but I don't think a week is going to put the project on. Yeah. And but the other that thing is, that I mean, seems to be a pre pretty big oversight. Yeah, and typically in a project like this, I mean, people, it, somebody says, I want X and I want it to be a change order, and the other party says, yeah, not so fast. I mean, you don't blow it up. You come to the table and you, you yeah. discuss it. Yeah, so I yeah. Don't think that would be. Yeah. yeah, we have a meeting coming up. I forget when it. We're we're trying to schedule a meeting to talk with the architect. I think that's on the about 18th. this. Okay. The eighteenth. Yeah. Are you going to be meeting with them, Christian? Or? Yeah, David and I. I, and I mean, you got to bring this to their attention because this is that we're not happy. It's, it's a little bit. Out it's of been brought to their attention already, and <laughs> you know we have documentation. Right now, I don't oh. know the total. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Everything okay? Oh, I shouldn't have signed this. I've got white out the whole thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, oh, you handed it to me. <laughs> I told you there was nothing to sign. Oh. It was already full. Um, <laughs> but we have some documentation. I don't have it all here with, uh, you know, where the overages, what percentage we're at right now. And, um, you know, Personally, I do feel like we just kind of need to approve these to keep everything moving and going forward and then address the issue moving forward um, and not risking stopping the project because of issues like this. Yeah, but we're kind of being held hostage by them yeah. coming to us and saying, hey, we need this or the project stops and we're, we're going to get that for the rest of the time if it, if it works each time they, they try it with us because we've done this in the past where we've said, hey, Trusses were wrong, this was wrong, that was wrong, we approved the change because yeah. we didn't want things to be delayed. They hold their feet to the fire. Yeah. Okay. In a week, I don't think we Yeah, I mean, if it was, you know, I, I think a week. So. If we weren't meeting until next month, that would make a right. difference. Right. Yeah. Just, it's just next week to have this discussion with them. Even tomorrow, yeah. if you get a chance to give them a call and let them know we're not happy with this and we want to work something out. Right. As far well, as I don't know what our legal repercussions yeah, are. To. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, if we do ask them, just if we really hold their feet to the fire, it's lawyers that's stopping the project. That's that's yeah. where it gets not to. Necessarily. Hopefully, it's it doesn't get to that. This is just business. It's not yeah. personal. It's not. It's not an insult. It's mistakes happen, and that's mm -hmm. what insurances are for. And that's what uh, you know. They could easily just say, you know what? Okay, we'll give you a credit for twenty thousand dollars off our fee. Something along those yeah. lines. There's some of our other projects, we wish we had held somebody's feet to the fire. Let me tell you. Okay. Like the elementary school and the public safety. Conference. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we'll hold, so I have the two change orders for structural internal stuff. One change order for a retaining wall and fencing at the south side, or on the north, no, that's on the north side. No, south side, sorry. I'm trying to get this all right where these are because there's retaining walls everywhere going in. Um, and then we have, we were going to possibly talk about uh, another site grading issue on the southwest corner of the property, but we're going to hold that too. So we basically are holding around $50,000 worth of stuff right now. Was, was that an elevation issue? Is that what that was? Or the other grading issue you said? Yeah, yeah. Um, or it's yeah. a grading I mean, issue. Thing, the site grading along the southwest corner of the perimeter of the building doesn't jive with the elevation of the building entry. So nine additional bollards are required because the curb protection of the building perimeter sidewalk cannot be achieved. So I was adding bollards, that one there. And I don't know if it's more grading too. It's kind of a PCO to be determined. Something's really wrong there. So okay. what are they going to do? Put a longer handicap ramp in if it's a foot too low, or what's their master plan? Are those change orders coming down the road too, or? 
I'm not sure. I don't it know. sounds like it's total failure. It sounds failure. like everything's going to be change yeah. orders related to the grading. The grading on it. Well, let's see. Uh, Where was Carl? Uh, yeah, seriously. Yeah. So audio visual? Audio visual scope. So I wanted to hold this to another meeting until there could be someone here from the seniors to kind of back this up. And really, all I want to vote on is us sending this audio visual scope out for RFP um, and not necessarily voting on the entire scope right now or what we're going ahead with specifically, but because of all the lead times, where we're at with the project, having to send this out to bid, it would be nice if we could just send it out to bid to get some accurate pricing in. And then talk about it later. And then talk about it later. So basically, um, you know, this again is money that is in the budget. It, I'm still trying to be clear about if it's under furniture and fixtures or if it's contingency and where that line is drawn. Um, but this is a scope of work to put in audiovisual equipment throughout the senior center. It's something that we're only going to do now if we have the chance to do it because it's wires and cables and all kinds of things that have to go in the walls before they put up the drywall and do all those things. But there's um, not money for it. It's, it's it in the budget. It wasn't part of the original scope, though. It wasn't scope. part of the original, this part of the scope. It's kind of in the furniture and fixtures and contingency realm. I don't know the exact numbers. Well, well, you're, you're, let's just be clear. Is it a part of their contingency? I don't know. Yeah. Do they have a ballpark idea of what we're looking at here? Are we talking ten thousand dollars? You're talking a hundred thousand dollars? This is close to a hundred thousand dollars we're estimating. Okay. But we need to get uh, bids out and back to know how much it will really cost. Did so we'll and I haven't even had a chance to talk to the senior center committee on this. It's basically just trying to get it out to bid. And that's why I hate to dive into details without so having them. What, if we haven't vetted this with the senior center building committee, um, what is the rush? Because it looks like October. The project, just trying to get it in in the project schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Getting prices back so we can get a contractor in because of the lead because we have to send it out. There's a I think we didn't we didn't necessarily plan on having to send it out to bid, okay. and the, and and the bid taking as long as it is does take. Yeah. If anything over ten thousand dollars goes out to bid. So in the but it was what should have been part of the original right. scope of the project. That was my question. Is there, there any of this state? stuff in the original project? Is there any yes, audio visual or anything like that? I, I don't know. I guess yeah. I don't know all the answers. Well, well let's table this for next week. I was yeah. say, can, can we do it next week? Hopefully, Jane yeah, sure. watching. And she can come here and enlighten us. She's on a cruise. She's on a cruise, right? Oh, so yeah. I doubt she's watching. Yeah. Oh, she yeah. could be at all. She would be here. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we can table it. Just to have more right. answers, um, Christian. I was just trying to get <laughs> get it out for that if I could. I hear you. Uh, okay. That's, that's a lot. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, no, it's a lot. It's a lot. If you're talking ten or twenty, it's, that's the difference. Now you're talking hundred thousand dollars. Well, and I, mean, I want to know if it was part of their contingency plan if they had enough money in their budget to do it to begin with. Yeah. I mean, I'm. We're gonna have the uh, finance committee meeting on the twenty second, and I want to get more details on where our whole finances are at with all the with mm -hmm. the change orders with this scope so you don't with a meet, lot of other oh, things you meet once a month once a month once <laughs> a month sorry getting tired <laughs> once a month with the finance committee so yeah and it's on the 22nd okay. could i ask on the change orders for the senior center um since we chose to table this discussion until next week that the if the finance committee or whoever happens to meet in the meantime, that they not approve these, since the select board has some questions about these change orders. I, I, yeah, I, I yeah. just don't want to see. Yeah, something. we don't meet until the twenty second. Okay. And honestly, uh, that this one here, number thirteen, might already have been approved. Yeah. yeah I don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. um, 
uh, and then we might not have just gotten a signed copy over to them, but uh, these other ones, the big one, the $22,000 one, that one has not been I thought we had talked about that since. I so think I they changed the too. trusses and uh, one of those sets of hangers were included Before. in them. Yeah. Oh, there was some. Because they, they changed the uh, uh, roof and the re weight ratio and mm -hmm. they had to change the trusses and I think that's when they did the... Well, that was, that was another issue. That was another issue. Yeah, yeah. But they, yeah. I think that all boat. I think mm -hmm. that all worked together with those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean... Think about those mm -hmm. hangers. Yeah. Well, and the other yeah. thing, too, I don't, well, I don't know how anybody else feels, but, um, you know, again, just reminding that we, town meeting appropriated a dollar figure based on a certain plan size building and then we downsize the building right. um, which is allowing there to be a healthy contingency mm -hmm. you know for that senior center and I mean I think everybody here wants to make sure that we build three really good buildings mm -hmm. and not not just one um, at the you know we haven't even started on the other we one haven't yet. even started on the other two yet really well I mean we did the demolition on one but the actual construction has not right. But moved along on the other two. Anybody in the construction field sees that these are complete oversights. Mm -hmm. You know, and the, 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 it just needs to be addressed. Oh yeah, no, I'm ta I'm not talking about that, John. I'm talking about you know, I mean, a hundred thousand oh, dollar yeah. ticket to yeah. get added on when you in know middle, we still have these other two. Yeah, it wouldn't even be a consideration in say the fire department because there's not enough of a contingency or the library. Well, the library is even yeah. less. Right. I mean, we're, yeah. you know, really down to bare bones there, so. And I'm just looking at, from my perspective, that we promised the taxpayers we would spend an X amount of dollars, and if we need to reallocate some money from the senior center or the, or the fire station or wherever, once it's all done and said and done, I'm saying once it's all said and done, to, to help cover the other added costs, then you know, we yeah. may need that money rather than... And that's another, that's and, you, that's and, you another don't, and you don't think that the people that voted for a certain amount of money going to a certain project doesn't want that money to come back to the town and not have it go on to their taxes. Yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah I don't no, think. Let's be I don't, realistic yeah, here. That too. I don't think let's we can play a shell money. game either. We can't yeah. shuffle we, money. No, no, I'm not yeah. saying shuffle money. I'm just saying that people expected to pay a, a maximum amount. So what I don't want to see is is let's just say the the library goes over, and rather than having to go back to the taxpayers and ask for an additional tax increase, if we had money left over from another project, then why not? Ask the taxpayers to spend that money on, say. You know, I got one more question that you need to ask, Noel exactly. Christian. Is the elevation change at the senior center? How is it going to affect the elevation at the library? Because I don't want a yeah, duck a pond question. in the middle of the parking lot, yeah. or you know, a fishing pond in the middle of the parking lot. There. Was it the it's going to make us all look real good? Yeah. Was it the same? We could have a skating rink. Uh, yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. A skating elevation. rink for the elderly. Yeah, that that'll go off real good. I guess it would be out. <laughs> no, right like the the yeah. 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 All right. Mm -hmm. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> if I think of anything that. else, I'll <laughs> text me. <laughs> uh, do you do we have any change orders for the higher, uh, the fire substation? No. We don't have anything. Yeah, actually, there's one on there. What? Yeah, there's, there's one, one on there. What? Yeah. It's a change order for two and a half copper water line to two inch water line. It's a deduction. We did that already. Yeah. And then there's a radiant heat rigid insulation, <coughs> which is that. We already did that. Yeah. Okay, well then you They're just need to sign done. it. Yeah, we already did that. Yeah, oh, we did them all. Oh, this is this is oh, last this, is, uh, yeah. this is a total yeah. change. Yeah. Okay, we, this just came in. They've asked for David to sign it because I guess he signed the original contract. That's fine. We approved just, the PCOs. Yeah, so I'm we, just making sure that okay. change yeah, orders are that clearly last, labeled for now on. Last we voted yes. Okay. You can just sign it. Okay. Um, now it has your name on it. I, I didn't write it. <laughs> okay, sorry. we got town administrator report, David. Do you have a quick, oh, quick thing? Quick. Moving very quickly, okay, so the, uh, the grant for the IT is now uh, complete. I uh, had a uh, quick orientation that the uh, department has meeting today and that departments are now loading their documents in uh, to 
a few stories in the place. We have a uh, North Hadley Village Hall sale. Uh, oh, the bid opening is this Friday? Christian. No, yes. Yes, this yes. Friday. 2 o'clock, Triangle Street. 2 o'clock. Okay. Um, just moving through the uh, uh, beginning bit. Mm -hmm. On the saw, Christian? I think, I think there's going to be. I think there's going to be two for sure. Affordable housing grant is going well. The uh, uh, NVP grant is going well. We're going to have that uh, stakeholders meeting on November 6th. Ditch cleaning has begun as of uh, this week. Uh, we have a new grant on the horizon, the Community Development Block Grant for affordable, senior affordable housing rehabilitation. So ramps, uh, roofs, uh, other kinds of uh, 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 program, uh, uh, projects. So we're going to try to uh, submit that grant in November. Uh, there will be uh, somebody from PBPC coming to the select board to talk this over. Uh, we're participating in a uh, group uh, grant having to do with best management practices for large scale solars and developments in uh, municipalities. Um, MVP is coming along. Um, the mass projects and mass POC projects are moving along. Uh, Hadley Housing Authority. So they actually did uh, finish that uh, management services agreement with that. Amherst Housing Authority. So now that program is being run by the Amherst Housing Authority. Um, for the state? For the state? For the state? For the state? Yeah. So that's that's a done deal. But our elected board Our elected stays representatives are still locally elected. But, so the um, so day to day operations are Amherst. Amherst and Amherst the uh, employee is Amherst now Amherst employee. Okay. okay. Oh. We're not paying it. We don't pay anything. <coughs> uh, electronic permitting, this is a project that we're uh, testing right now. We're trying to integrate all of the permit and inspection administration for buildings, seal of waste measures, fire department, police, select board, DPW. Board of Health Conservation Commission. Uh, all the departments. All the departments. <laughs> so we've looked at uh, several uh, programs. Citizen Serve is used in Montague. Uh, Viewpoint gave a presentation that lasted two and a half hours. We're going to do a field trip to Williamstown. And November 1st, we're going to have uh, Point Software do their presentation. Uh, so we're quite kicking the tires and we're thinking about setting this up for the annual town meeting. Uh, we hope to have quarterly revenues by next week. Uh, financial management team got together and they made recommendations about how to uh, best manage the ambulance uh, rebate of $267,500. Um, Tim talked about his building coordination uh, yep. meetings. Those are very successful. We have about 15 projects going on right now estimated well exceed $10 million in value. Uh, we had to defer the audit to October 21st. Uh, we just talked about the special town meeting. Uh, we just hired the senior services director. Uh, we have the human resources uh, director search uh, going on. Um, we talked about Bay State Municipal Accounting and that's about it. So one thing we didn't talk about is the forum. So the forum for the oh, town yeah. meeting was the week before, but I know Jennifer this morning made a, an impassioned plea to have it on the 17th. No, no, no. No. 20, you can do it on the 24th. We can. I have the building, I have the room reserved the 17th, the 24th, and the 7th. Oh, and not the, yeah, not the yes. 31st. Not the 31st. Oh, I figure everybody's going to be a little busy that night. Okay. All right. Which one? The 31st. Yeah. Tree, tree. You might not know I'm there or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it will be the 24th. 24th, yeah. Yeah, we did. Should, do we need a motion for that? No. To change that? Or we're just going to say public forum 24th. And that's at 7 o'clock hours, right? Yep. That's November 7th.
7 o'clock or 6 o'clock? 7. 7 o'clock. Oh, and what time is town meeting? Is that 6? 7. 7, seven but it's we meet at 6. six. Okay. Thank you, David. Thank you. All right, any announcements? You have one. Yeah, I have one. Collector's office would like to remind residents that the second quarter real estate tax bill is due <coughs> on November 1st. Uh, you would have received the invoice for that billing back in the first week of July. The first and second quarter bills are always mailed together in one envelope on July 1st. In past years, the two quarters were printed on separate sheets of white paper. This year, the format was different uh, because it was a legal size invoice. The top, top portion was due 8-1 and just below that, the 11-1 invoice was due. Uh, if you're coming into the collector's office to pay, please bring the entire sheet as it can be stamped on the very bottom portion as a receipt for your payment. The amounts are very similar, if not exact, for the first two quarters. So. Could you show the green sheet of paper? Oh yeah, we have the green sheet of paper. That's what this is all about. So yeah, green sheet of paper perforated with the uh, top portion would be due 8-1, bottom portion 11-1. I don't remember seeing Guess you better pay the artist one then. Yeah. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta you gotta go to their office and check if you paid or not. Yeah, some the old man. Um, that's all I have, I believe. Well, pa the paving. Did you say that too? Paving tomorrow. Yeah, South Maple. South Maple. Yeah. Avoid it. They've been paving for a couple of days now, actually. So. Okay. All around. Any other announcements? All right. Motion to adjourn. Any. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you.